Good morning to Hat City here. Uh, you can see where we are. Looking right at our old tip of my fingers. And there, just want to tell you something, and so should this right here. Yes, we're at Finney's Sporting Goods in Plattsburgh, New York is where we are. I'm going to take this off right now. Uh, we, we, can see, we can see the eyes and the faces. And this is Gary Finney right here. Gary, smiling Gary Finney. And we're here primarily to do a story on the Finney family and their... Uh, life with the farmers over the years and with sports for the last uh, 30, uh, Gary? Long time. Long time. And then your dad <laughs> before that. All right. Let's tell us a little bit. First of all, tell us about uh, Gary Finney. Where, tell us a little bit about Gary. Uh, which Gary? This Gary right here. <laughs> this Gary. Well, born in Peru, I take it? Yeah, born in Peru, New York. That's right. Born in Peru, New York. And uh, my dad, and several of the older people watching this might remember him. Big Bill Finney. From W.W. W. Finney and Sons and Farm Machinery in Plattsburgh. John Deere. John Deere, that's right, John Deere. I still see people every day that ask me and remind me of things that my father did. And uh, I just was kind of unfortunate enough that uh, he died when I was 13 years old, so I didn't really have a full life with, with my dad. But I said to a lot of these people that tell me a lot of things that I didn't know, and uh, it was a, I just wish I could have spent more time with him. The older people out there, and including myself and people my age, will remember uh, the John Deere on Riley Avenue, John where the bottle redemption, or what's that? Uh, that's they call right, it? right down where the uh, dis discount place that's is, the a beverage discount yeah. store. That's the big right. green, and the, of course the big famous John Deere Day. Uh, remember John, that? That down the Champlain Theater, down on uh, Clinton Street in uh, in Plattsburgh. Oh yes, the kids come from. FFA kids from all over the county would come to that every. They they even skip school once in a while to get to that. <laughs> you know about. <laughs> they they had a they had pancakes. They had a pancake dinner or something. They a little bit of everything that day. My father and mother used to come down. Of like going to the fair. I remember I remember the night before those John Deere days that that all the help everybody who worked for my dad and my mother would come into the store that, that night and they'd make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sandwiches. Then you remember Emery Mitchler, who had Toot and Tell him. Sure do. Then he would come down and make all the Michigan sauce, and it was, you know, it was really a, it was really quite a day. It was people you, I still have pictures, all kinds of pictures of those John Deere days. You didn't bring any with you, I'm telling <laughs> no. you. He was going to bring one here. We're in the store at the North Country Shopping Center, uh, Finney Sporting Goods, and uh, you lost your dad very young, as you say. You yeah. were 13? 13 years old, yeah. And he was uh, early 44, 40, 44, 44 years old. 44. And, I was just telling Gary before we started that I can remember him. I thought he was an old man when he was 43, 44, and you, you didn't ever call him Mr. Finney because he would tell you where, where, what his name was. It was it was Bill, and Big Bill. Big Bill, I used to call him, right? Yeah, we 377 when he died. He weighed three. Was three that what it was? 56 around the waist. I can remember uh, my fellows used to come around the place and play with me when I was a kid. Yeah. We used to both, each one of us would get into one of his pant legs and jump around in his pair of his pants. The old CCIL league uh, where Peru was in, you you didn't only have to beat the uh, the, the team from Peru, you had to beat Bill Finney because he was always there with his money, uh, betting on his team and uh, participating in the cheering. Remember yeah, his well, cheering? Cheer uh, Remember he was the Indian out in the middle of the powwow thing? He would sit out there with his leg uh, uh, out in front of him and he would wear a, a feather on. Your phone is ringing. Do you want to get that or... Someone else got yeah. it back there, and he'd sit there, and he would they, he would put his hand back here and go whoa 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 whoa. <laughs> then he he pound both hands on the floor, and then the cheerleaders danced around him, and uh, he just tore down the the area. Yeah, he was he had a lot of fun with the young people. He enjoyed being around young people. The young people enjoyed being around him. Right, that's right. He was a, he was a young person in, uh, yeah. himself. Yeah. Now, Bill. All right, uh, Gary. There was you and your brother. My brother Bill. All right. Yeah, he's retired <clears throat> from now, and he's living in Florida, Vero Beach, Florida. Okay, let's let's go back to you though first. Uh, <laughs> let's go back to you. Uh, you attended school in Peru, uh, Peru Central, and then I left Peru and went to pla and finished the last three years of Plattsburgh High School. You graduated what year? Fifty six. And you, um, they said that uh, Gary Finney used to get away with a lot of uh, flying elbows. Do you remember that? Do you, uh, was that was that I, true? That was so long ago. No, I, you don't remember? I don't, I don't remember that. No one's ever <laughs> told you, reminded you of that? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> one of the big scorers at Plattsburgh High School. Well, we had there was a lot of good. I, I was fortunate. I played a lot of good basketball players. Who was on some of the teams with you? Can you remember? Give us some names. Yeah. Uh, that little skinny lawyer in Plattsburgh, Air Asadorian, you know him? Yeah, yeah. 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 He, was, he, he was, played uh, with you? He, he was on that team. And um, uh, Barry Kaiser, uh, that, was a, that was a big name. Barry was a great athlete. And uh, Oliver Wells. And, and in Peru, there was uh, Tommy Allen and 
Bob Boyd and Bob Parsons and my goodness gracious, I could just name all kinds of guys. And okay, after you got out of high school, what, what, what happened to Gary? Well, I got out of high school and then I went one year down to Ithaca College and uh, I knew more than they did down there, so <laughs> I come back to Plattsburgh State and uh, and I thought I knew more than they did at Plattsburgh State, and at that's the time that I went into business with my my, my family. Okay. Uh, now what what business did you go in right then? Into the sporting goods at that no, no, time? No, 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 no. That's when we were in the fire machinery business. Oh, okay. You went in. You were my brother Bill. Oh, all right. And my mother and myself when we were in the fire machinery business. Okay. Your mom is still living in yes, Peru. Yes, she is. Yeah. yeah and plays golf, good health. Plays very good place. Golf two or three days a week, and and uh, I was on the phone making sure that everything's all right and. Worrying about all of her children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So now, when when you, how long did you operate the, the John Deere business? When did <coughs> I <laughs> remember the year approximately? I, I think it was it was in the '60s. Some when when we we got out of the business, that's when Sarto drew down here. The Drew Brothers mm -hmm. got, took over. Yeah. Did you sell to them uh, more or less? No, we went out. We just had gone out of business and my, that's when my brother Bill uh, started the ice cream stand down by the Troopers barracks. Oh yes. Well, listen, that phone is ringing. Let me get you to get your phone. We don't want to interrupt your business and we'll get right back to you. Stop ringing. <laughs> All right, we're, we're, it, it stopped ringing. If you were the one that was calling out there, Bill, uh, Gary was busy. I want to keep calling you Bill as your father's well, influence on does. me. I get called that all okay. the time. Now, your brother Bill uh, graduated from, um, he was older than you by several years, I think. Ten take years. It. Ten years older. And he graduated from Peru yes, Central uh, uh, at that time. He played with, against me, as a matter of fact, way back in... Uh, Are you that old? Uh, well, I think he graduated in 45, <laughs> as a matter of fact. 45? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It was in 1945 that I was playing in a game in Peru, uh, in Peru, and Peru was beating us. Peru was beating us uh, by two or three points, and it was getting to the end, and I was a guard, and I remember Pete Keenan was uh, dribbling the ball, and he kind of held the ball away from me, so I couldn't, and I wanted to follow him, but I didn't want it to be a deliberate, so I reached around, and I remember that I just kind of squeezed him, and when I squeezed him, the ball got him in the, in the stomach, and he just passed right out. He fainted on the floor, and... Out of the, f uh, your brother right on top of me, you know, he's going to beat me up because I just, uh, oh yes, and your dad out of the stands. and Well, anyway, things calmed down. Things calmed down afterward and didn't get hurt. I, I, I just squeezed him a little bit and it, he, he just lost his air. And then uh, we played on an all-star team together and uh, I gave him, I don't know how many assists that ball game and we played baseball against each other after that. And um, Peru was always a... a they, they had good coaching. Tony Papro. Tony Papro uh, legend. Teach, oh, yeah, teaching soccer way back when Peru was the only team that knew what they were doing, you know? Three, three, there's four guys I tried in, in my years of coaching baseball and basketball around the North Country here and football. There's four guys that I tried to model myself after. Tony Papro, of course, was one of them because of he's strong dedication he'd put in 26 hours a day with kids if that's what it took the other two guys were uh, john flynn and barry brandon mm -hmm. as far as i was concerned uh, they got more out of less talent than anybody could possibly they were just i always marveled and then and then my basketball coach at plattsburgh high school ernie de Gudis, who i felt was the first basketball coach in the north country to come in here and explain but picks and rolls and things were in. Now when you were playing, Barry Brandon was the coach at uh, St. John's, St. John's, huh? oh yes. Did they used to beat you? We had some good games. Yeah, it's a good game. I'll what? tell you a little story about Barry Brandon. We were over in Burlington, I was catching for Plattsburgh High School. And we were over in Burlington and the catcher over there, every time we'd get in the batter's box and we'd come with the back swing, he'd just put his mitt up like that and he'd just tip the bat like that and he would throw us off and throw us all off. I see, I thought that was a great trick. So when I come back, the first game we had was against St. John's. And Barry Brandon, I, that guy knew what you were thinking about before you started even thinking about it. I got in there and the first couple of batters were up there and I kept tipping their bat and it was throwing them all off and everything else and he didn't take any time come right out. He said, that kid learned that trick from somebody <laughs> over in Burlington. <laughs> and it, and I, I scared me to death. I didn't do it the rest of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just saw Barry's picture in the paper this past week, right? Great man. Into sugaring uh, out yeah. near West Jay-Z someplace. Yeah. Let's see a little Barry out there. Hey, you, you, Barry, you hear what he said about you? Uh, 
the last that uh, Mary was in here, in fact, it was real nice here. One day we were to, a little pol politicking going on here. We had a pretty good Democrat and Barry Brandon and, and uh, Ron Stafford happened to be in here. And we went, at Christmas time, we had a great, uh, great conversation in here. That was, that was a lot of fun. I saw Barry last time, maybe eight or ten years ago. He came up to customs and was talking about uh, bringing syrup in or with some other things in from Canada and talked with him then. And he was a, uh, and you say Flynn is another one. Uh, now, the, one of the Flynn's, uh, which Flynn did you say you were talking John about? Flynn was John Flynn. John, okay. The then Shorty was the other one. Shorty, Shorty was his brother. Okay. Now, who is uh, the, the Flynn lives out here in Cumberland Head? That's Bill Flynn. That Bill. Now, who's he, he coached. That's, that's John's son. And that's he John's. All the time. Okay. And then there, old John's grandson, Johnny, who comes in here all the time from UPS, was a great, great athlete over at MAI. Okay. Now, I keep getting you because you look so much younger than you really are. You're, getting, you're older <laughs> than you, you know. But I keep saying, you know, that uh, Bob and uh, Bill... Junior uh, or the third, uh, like your, they're your brothers, and they're really your nephews, right? They're, they're Bill's nephews. two boys. That's right. Now let's talk about Bill just for a second. Bill, who used to be here and graduated in '45, uh, worked for the uh, liquor authority, I think. Uh, yeah, and then he was a civil, was the uh, county civil service, service examiner in the last ten or eleven years. Okay, and at that time. Uh, the two boys, or at least Bill, his son, was going to Syracuse University, where he was playing Both basketball. Both boys got scholarships to Syracuse University. And uh, we're stars there, right? Uh, well, pretty they, well, they were. They Bill, uh, Bobby transferred back and finished out at Plattsburgh State, and uh, Billy, uh, he finished out there. But he got hurt in his junior year, and his junior and senior year were kind of. He had bad ankles. That was up. Bill. Bill. He. I mean, he played, but he was. He was never. He played with Lee, remember? Uh, the Lee boys. The Lee and, boys uh, and a few of the others. He used to bring up here to the PBA tournament. Bayheim and now, when I talked to your brother Bill, and he told me, I said, you ever get to see any of the games? I think he told me he had all the games they had. He only missed a couple. I'll tell you. It, would be, it was nothing. In fact, my wife and I, we have, we have friends, and we, we took off and drove from Keysville to Long Island, and this was a long time ago, and saw... Syracuse University played St. John's, and then we all jumped in the car because we didn't have five cents to stay all night, and drove all the way back. I mean, that was that. And my brother Bill did that all. I know he said he did. He said he didn't have the money; he had to be back, so he would yeah. go down and come back the same night. Mm -hmm. Well, we're talking with Gary Finney. What's going on here is the name of our program, and we're at the Finney Sporting Goods. And Gary, um, I, one of the owners, I say, well, one because his wife is the other, I assume, <laughs> yeah, right? And she's the one doing the work back there. And uh, someone in here want to talk to you for a second? We'll be right back to you here on uh, Hometown Cable. Here's where it started, right here. Of course, Bill and uh, wife, your mother's name? Dorothy. Dorothy. Dorothy uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bill Finney Sr. And wh where was she from? Is she from Peru originally? She was from Peru, yeah. yeah she was. What did your granddad do? What did, uh, your well, my grandfather, my dad's father, uh, started this business with my, my with uncle. With the John Deere? You mean? Yeah. That, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was WW? WW. He was the original WW. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. Yeah. And my mother was a farm girl from up in the, up in the Patton. Okay. So this, of course, is the uh, uh, picture back, uh, you must have been, that was in the 40s, yeah. early 50s, right? 50s. Yeah, yeah, it was Pat Wayne. And this, of course, is uh, much recent of your mother uh, here, and she's still living in Peru. Uh, all right. Getting back now a little bit, let's just talk a little bit more about Bill's boys. Um, uh, Bill... The third, we're going to call him the fourth, whatever your yeah. your nephew. Right. Uh, where is he now? He's coaching basketball and is the athletic director at Marymount College in Arlington, Virginia. And he's married and has twin daughters, who are great basketball players. In fact, there was an article in USA Today on the girls. Uh, they've been nominated for Parade All American, High School All American. Uh, they just have received and accepted, to the best of my knowledge, a full ride at Georgia Tech, both of them. And, uh, so they're 18? 17, 18? 17. 17? Are they tall like that? One's, one of the girls are, is 6 foot and the other is 5'11". We've well, got some pictures over in front of your register. Right, Maybe right. we'll take a picture, a little bit of that later on here. But uh, have you seen them play? Oh, yes. Yeah, in fact, uh, we saw them play against Northeast Clinton in the Summer League here uh, about two years ago. I mean, they're, 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 they're great players. You imported them to play against Northeastern? <laughs> well, Did you beat Northeastern? Oh, I don't know. I think I, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Southwick and I were just talking about this the other time. What happened? Well, Northeast Clinton had a very good basketball team, you know, girls yep. basketball, which Donza had good teams up there right along. And, 
and Pru was rather young and didn't and hadn't won anything in the league. And one of the boys in Pru, Jayla Page, got a hold of Don and said, "Look at," he said, "these girls are up from Arlington, Virginia. I think it'd be all right if they played with the Perugias." And Don was very gracious, and I think knowing that it probably was good for his girls too. It, it was pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. It was. Fun. <coughs> it was fun. It was. It was fun, huh? Well, uh, of course, uh, even though living in Keysville, I think that yeah, at, not only because you're living in Keysville, but Osable Valley is, is is your school now, right? That's it. And you're pretty active down there over the years. <laughs> Been around there for a long time. My boys played there. And you way. don't teach. You never no, taught. No. But in sports, you've been coaching. Yeah, coaching there for a long time. And what what sports? I coach basketball. Uh, I when John Conowitz left and went. Uh, 11 years ago, I started. I took the varsity basketball team there. I was coaching freshman basketball prior to that, and then I was in Willsboro prior to that, coaching varsity baseball. And I coached uh, varsity baseball at uh, Los Abel for a number of years. We went to the Final Four one year, which is quite a thrill. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we'll get into those in just a second, a little bit more. But now, uh, your family, how many children? Yeah, three boys. Well, first of all, I'll get back to your wife. Your wife is. Jerry. Jerry, yeah, she's uh, from this area. Yeah, she's from Willsboro. Mm -hmm. She never had a pair of shoes on until I, till she married me, and then I <laughs> <her first> pair <laughs> Yeah, and then said you kept her barefoot and pregnant again, yeah, right? But right. so you never did get to get these shoes on. You're sitting over there yeah. listening to this. There, go ahead, talk loud. Uh, and we had we had three super young boys. We enjoyed them. We didn't miss much that they did over the years. It was Gary, Gary Jr. and uh, Tommy, and Andy. I was fortunate enough to be able to coach Andy a couple of years, and uh, Gary's in Missouri right now, uh, working for the Sprint Telephone people, and Tommy's in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and he's an air traffic controller, and Andy's in uh, Augensburg, and he is a uh, correcting officer. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say you were able to teach uh, to coach Andy, what about the other two? You weren't. No, they were. Is that because you didn't have the ability to coach them, or you weren't? They weren't available at the time. No, I was coaching at the time in Willsboro, and uh, John was coaching. John Conowitz was coaching the varsity, and of course he had them. But when a little story, uh, I was coaching junior varsity basketball in Willsboro, and I would have a basketball game in Crown Point. I can remember one night of having a basketball game in Crown Point, a JV basketball game, and immediately after the game, got in my car, <coughs> and I was in. Champlain, Northeast Clinton, in time to see the second half of the varsity game with the boys. That's tough to stay within the speed <laughs> limit, too, yeah. huh? Well, yeah, a helicopter would have been the nice thing to have at that time. But that's the way it was then. We'd, I, we'd, we'd, we'd travel, we'd go anywhere, and, we'd make, and I think that's what parents have to do, is make sure they get around and stay with their yeah. family and keep their family together. Well, up. you know, m most wives like to see a girl in the family once in a while. <laughs> Does that mean that you and Bill didn't have any girls at all? No, not any. You anymore. and your brother? But the... But and, and my boys, my two boys that are married don't don't have girls. Uh, they have, but but, the, but Bill's boys all have have all girls in their family. all girls. All okay, girls. so he finally got some women in this yeah, in this right. Finney family, <laughs> that's huh? That's right. Yeah, but they all have to be careful. You want to keep that Finney name going, you know? <laughs> well, we, we we tried hard. <laughs> right now, uh, let's talk about this baseball team. You said you went to the Final Four. What year was that? And tell me a little bit about it. I don't know what year it was. I think it was three years or four years ago. We had a great bunch of kids. I, uh, over the years, you know, you, you we had Pat Perro and his brother Kevin and Tommy Lerman and uh, we had just a bunch of real fine athletes in that team and uh, we played, uh, we won the league and uh, the team that's Water Valites coming up to play Saranac uh, in the basketball regionals here on Saturday, they were state champions the year before and they came up to play us and uh, what an experience. We walked in there we had 11 kids, three aluminum baseball bats, and a bag of balls, and I think all of our uniforms matched. And we took our batting practice and so forth and so on, and we, all of a sudden Water Valite arrived, and they had about 35 kids on the team, <laughs> 2,000 spectators. They had char chartered bus after bus after bus after bus. What an experience. I was watching them walk down to the ballpark and I happened to glance over and I saw my kids, they were all kind of looking. I quickly got them all together down in the dugout 
So they had to look at me so they couldn't see him, start telling <coughs> stories, just start telling them anything. And I just didn't want them to pay attention to what was going on. I was afraid they were going to get intimidated, but they certainly weren't intimidated that day. That was a, that was a, a great day. How much did you beat them by? Five to three. Five to three. Was that here in Plattsburgh? Yes. Yeah. Down at Bailey Field? Bailey Avenue. Yeah. I, remember, I remember that. Yeah. And then you went on from there? We went on down to Little Falls in the final four, and we got beat. Uh, we had we were ahead 5-3 in the fifth, and we, we couldn't hang on to it, and we got beaten. Mm -hmm. But it was an experience. We were, certainly was, huh? Yeah. Great. Now, one other unusual thing is I, I didn't know this was happening until I saw it in the paper. I said, how can you do that? You teach or you coach basketball at uh, Aus Sable mm -hmm. last winter, or you're... And baseball well, at Shazie in the same school year. Well, what happened was that I had, uh, after all those years of baseball in Osceola Valley, and I, my wife uh, and I decided it was time for me to get out of baseball and spend a little bit more time in the business, which I did. And <clears throat> about a week prior to the season, <laughs> uh, Charlie came in from Shazie and uh, said, "We're got we're in an awful fix." We Who's need Charlie? Charlie O'Connor. O'Connor, okay. He said, we're in an awful fix. Uh, we need a coach. And I said, I just can't do it, Charlie. I said, I'm, I've got out of it because uh, I just don't have the time. And He said, well, we really need somebody. Well, what I said to him was, Charlie, I'm going to Florida. When I get back, maybe I can help you. What I meant was maybe I could help him find somebody. And when I come back from Florida, I found out that I was the baseball coach in Shay Z. So we kind of stung in there. And, we, and I've enjoyed the nice bunch of boys and nice bunch of nice little school. I've enjoyed Shazy very much. Mm -hmm. That is very, very unusual. You got to admit, though, the same year at oh, two yeah. different schools. Yeah. Then you play. You were playing baseball against some of your basketball players. I take it. Well, no, because uh, mm. they are two different leagues. two different leagues. All right. Well, one of the things about when I did go to the Shazy, I I was able to to do something that I don't think many people have. I I, I when I went to coach in Shazy. I think I'm the only guy that has beat every team in the Mountain and Valley because when I was coaching in Willsboro, we beat Shay Z. When I was coaching in Shay Z, we beat Willsboro. So okay. we beat every team in the Mountain and Even to the one that you had been with. All right. Yeah, that is unusual. Absolutely. All right. We're going to get into uh, some of the other things that Gary Finney has done over the years uh, and some of the stories I've heard and see if they're true. Uh, you're gonna, I'm not going to tell you ahead of time, but we can just, and we'll get right back on that. You're watching Hometown Cable. What's going on here? It's on every night. Uh, remember, you can watch Hometown Cable here on uh, on Channel 21 uh, at uh, 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 1 a.m. in the morning, and 9 the following morning. And if you're watching Channel 29 right now, and I'm sure that you're enjoying talking with your neighbor and your, your benefactor, your great friend here, Gary Finney, uh, that's on at 8 o'clock uh, Monday through Thursday nights, and uh, at 8 o'clock and again at midnight. And uh, those shows will vary, a lot of sports. And uh, if you like what you're seeing, tell Falcon Cable. And we know up north you'll like it if you... Anything you want to make any comments, talk to Calvin, who's running the camera, or myself, Bob Venn. If you want to see the sports people around the, the community, just stop in the Finney's store. And as a matter of fact, stop in any time at Finney's Sporting Goods. And we're here talking with uh, Gary. And in walks this smiling gentleman right here. Now he's smiling. <laughs> John Zaran. Did I pronounce that right? Right. All right, yep. John. And uh, we know that you were, we see your name a lot in uh, baseball. Uh, are you still pitching? Well, this year I've been asked to come back, but I'm going to be 36 next week, and uh, I think that I'm past my pitching days. Well, yeah, but you've had some good days over the years. You've really. Uh, where did you go to school uh, when you were in high school? In high school, Peru. You were at Peru? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so you know this guy, Vinny, pretty well, then, huh? Yeah. Hey, Coach JV Basketball, former coach. He was with me down in the, when we were in the Final Four. Oh, yeah. Did, did I was coaching JV Baseball one yeah? day. Our team went to the Has he ever four. taught you anything? Was he able to uh, teach you anything, this guy? Few coaching yeah, skills. A few yeah. coaching skills, all right. Yeah. So, John, you are married and you are living where? In Osable Forks. And working where? I work up at Adirondack Correctional Facility in uh, Raybrook. And I come right out of work and go right to Osable and start my coaching day. Okay, you have a couple children? Two children, boy and a girl. I think you're quite uh, friendly with, you know, my son-in-law, yeah. Mike, quite well. Right. That's one of the places I've met you, yeah. along with them. And do you still get together at all? Uh, well, I think we're both going different directions. They're into hockey and we're into basketball, and it's very hard. We've yeah. noticed once the kids got older that we're, we're moving two different ways. Mm -hmm. So you're you're coaching now at Osable to JV? Is that I the had idea? JV basketball, and I just got appointed varsity baseball. 
Uh huh. Well, great for you. And uh, you teach these people how to pitch the ball now. Hopefully. Huh? Throw that big Hopefully. curve. Yeah. Thanks very much for talking with us, John. Thank you. Nice seeing you. John Zaran, and uh, you've seen him. Maybe he'll come back at 36. Uh, what's his name? Palmer's coming back at how old? 44? 44, huh? 45. So maybe you'll teach him how to come back. Maybe. I tried last year <laughs> three innings, and it didn't work. Well, Ryan, how old is Ryan? How old is Nolan? 44. 44 also? Yeah. Got eight years to go. You're just not old enough to come back they yet. They paid me as much as they get paid, I'd try it. <laughs> Thanks much, John. Okay. We told you we get back to the, the female part of the Finney family, and here, here we have right here, Gary, tell us. Well, these are the girls. That, they just graduated from uh, uh, Bishop Connell down in, uh, in Arlington, and uh, this article is uh, USA Today, where they beat Christ the King, which was the number one high school team in the United States. They beat him by 11 points, and uh, Christy was the most valuable player of the tournament, and Kathy, of course, was an all-star also. And these are the, here they are here. This is their picture, and, and they're typical Finneys. They, they sent that picture to their aunt and myself and told us that that was their senior picture. Well, everybody else in the family got beautiful, beautiful pictures, and of course that's why they get even with us because we're always doing crazy stuff. And this is this this is this is their graduation senior picture Make that they sent to their aunt and uncle. Okay, <laughs> terrific. And uh, you say you you get you do get a chance to see them play high school ball. Have you seen well, them play? Well, we haven't seen it. But I just saw them play that one uh, one time. Well, you get you get the, you'll get when does Georgia Tech play Syracuse? Uh, the girls later I, on? I don't know. You don't know? They, I'm sure they. Probably do in the things. All right. Well, if you look around, and Calvin got the camera. You're looking around at some of the, the pictures over here, of uh, the sporting teams. And most of that is at our Sable and and around. And uh, most of these pictures over here are teams. Uh, that's our basketball championship basketball team last year. Right? The red one right in the middle there. No, the one over there with all the signatures. And I'll uh, go get that for you. Okay. Me. Why don't you do that here? Uh, most of these other teams are teams that we sponsored one time or another in the tournaments and so on. Yeah. Oh, okay, here's this the is, picture. This is a picture of last year's basketball okay. team right here. Okay. Just hold that right up here. That was a that was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with those kids last year. So what we're talking right here, you've had a chance to meet the J V coach and the varsity coach of All Sable Patriots. And you said that uh, th their record this year was not what you had planned on? In all stable? Yeah. Uh, not really. But they, they but they, they got a lot of good sportsmanship. But we'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> We're here now with the real business half of the of the of the Finney family. The one that isn't always talking with people coming in and she's doing the work and getting it done. This yes, is Jerry. I'm Jerry. Right? Jerry Finney. Mrs. Finney, and uh, of course, we don't want to just think that you can only talk about the family. Let's talk a little bit about Jerry first. You're here every day. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. And you're that friendly voice we hear when you in the, on the phone. I try to be. All right. And uh, now the chill, the boys are not working here at all, right? No. Did they Jerry, work for a while? Yes. Uh huh. Andy used to work with us, and uh, then he went into uh, correction officers, and um, Tommy did. After he graduated from Potsdam and in between his job as um, an air traffic controller, he worked with us for a year. And then he has moved down to Memphis, Tennessee, and that's where he works and lives. And Andy is now, um, he lives up in um, Canton. And uh, Gary was with us, Gary was with us for several years, mm -hmm. but then he left this past October and now he is working out in uh, Springfield, Missouri. Okay, then. So uh, now it's back to just mom and dad. We're uh, like a mom and pop store. Yeah, and, and togetherness. Huh? togetherness. Yes, right. You, you've got a chance to be with Gary for 24 hours. So these people some envy days, you. Some days it's like 48 hours <laughs> a day. <laughs> well, I know he's on the road a lot doing different yes. things and I just heard him uh, talk about being a caller for a square dance. He does that also. Yes. Um, Willsboro. He said you're from Willsboro. Yes, what was I your am. What was your family name? Uh, my mother uh, was uh, is Edith Lassard, and uh, my father has passed away. Um, I went to high school down there and graduated from there. And your yeah, father Bodette is down in your, your community. I don't know if you maybe not be maybe not be Catholic, but uh, Father Bodette is a, was from Champlain is now in yes. uh, and a great follower of the Montreal Canadiens. You know, yes. <laughs> and uh, I seen up this morning's paper. Some very bad news out of Willsboro this morning. Yes, I I heard that last night and this morning on oh, the news. What a blow that's going Absolutely, to be. Absolutely, yes it is. And I'm sure that the people down there must be devastated by this because 
there are a lot of women that work down there and um, that are employed and I mean after all it's a small community and I know that they have to be very upset about yeah. this. Well we had that in Champlain when you know when Harris left not long ago but uh, it will come back and mm -hmm. they, you will have that nice building I'm sure things will happen. Now uh, anything else here we want to talk about your family. Uh, okay. You probably were with the family more than Gary was, although he had it when they were with sports. The youngest I see here are the three together. What is right. about this picture? And it's even got a broken glass, you see. Yeah. Now, does That's that mean you are upset at the time? No, no, no. This is really old. Um, this is the very first picture that was ever taken of my three boys together. And it was kind of a fun thing because their grandmother took them to her house, and she took them out and bought them all new shirts and new ties. And then she took them and had their picture taken. And Andy was, uh, Andy here, he was only uh, about four years old at the time. And they were, it was a secret, and they were not to tell anybody. And sure enough, this was, they presented this to us one Easter. <laughs> and they kept the secret, and they were all dressed up with their t and their shirt and their tie, just the same as the picture was. And how many years ago is this now? Oh you're, my you're, heavens, you're, we're getting gosh, close to Easter now, right, you know. You got to be talking almost 20 years. Wow! How close are the boys in age? Uh, let me see. Gary is 30, Tommy is 28, and Andy is uh, 25. Okay, so well, there's uh, mm -hmm. five years between them, mm -hmm. all, all three. All right, now, we, th this obviously is not their pictures. Right. These this are... Is, right. This is my grandson, Trevor. He lives in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Tommy's boy. Mm -hmm. And he just turned uh, two this past week. And this is Andrew, and he's five years old. He turned five in the end of December. And that's Andy's son, that's little, little Andy's Andy? Son, little right. Andy? Right. Yes, uh-huh. So I just have two grandsons. Yeah, we see those took a prominent place up here. And then we have some smaller pictures, too, oh, that yeah. uh, you may want to show us here. Well, this is a recent picture of Andy. I don't know how well Which would be, this is the, the, uh, Andy's right. father here, all right? Right. And this is Andy and his wife, Yvonne, and Andrew. Kind of a Christmas thing. And um, Tommy and his wife, Lori, and Trevor went out to visit Gary and his girlfriend, Colleen, in Springfield. Missouri, and this is a picture of Tommy and Trevor and Gary. Mm -hmm. We like family pictures, as you can see. And this is when Papa doesn't have anything else to do. He likes to play horsey. And this is another picture of his leisure time. N another right? favorite picture here. Yes, uh, wait, yeah. good, good thing he's not right here, uh, right. Jerry. We wouldn't get away with this. Uh, so glad we got you to have these here. <laughs> there he is with his dog and cat, just sitting there on the chair and enjoying maybe one of the uh, uh, ESPN ball games. Right. Home, oh, hometown, hometown cable. cable. Put him to sleep. We yeah. put him to sleep. <laughs> we put him to sleep. All right. Here is. Uh, That's it, Trevor again. This is Trevor. Okay. Right, this past Christmas. Right here. As you That's see, Trevor yes. there. Uh huh. He's getting older, and we miss him, and he will be up in July for a vacation. Okay. Now we have. This is just another snapshot of young Gary and his new apartment out in Springfield. Okay. And another of Gary. And this is Tom and Trevor again. Okay, we're talking with the Finney family. We're at Finney Sporting Goods. We're talking with Jerry, Mrs. Finney. And uh, th this is Mr. Finney. Get over here together here. Look, I'll, I'll keep them apart because they're <laughs> together so much here. Yeah. What do you got to say about these pictures, mister? Well, I don't know. They're pretty nice, aren't they? You sure <laughs> are. Sure are. <laughs> Uh, have you taught him how to play, uh, shoot a basketball yet, or swing yeah, a bat, or anything? They're, they're so far away that we don't get a chance to see them that much. Well, we miss them awful. And when they, when they, they got, uh, Tommy's got Trevor playing basketball down there, and uh, and uh, Andrew's got his own little basket and his ball. And uh, when he gets down here, we we, we, we do a lot of it. Okay, uh, just talk a little bit about the the, the Finney Sporting Goods here. Uh, what? How did this start? Did you, did you then start right here? You started from your home, or yeah, we started in the started the trunk of my car. All right, doing what? Uh, I had about fifteen or sixteen pairs of sneakers and about one hundred and twenty-five dollars in my pocket, and that's where we went from. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it was the original idea was that the boys were going to, but they've now since gone out on their own. So yeah. now, Mom and Pa got a. That's what I said. This is the mom and pop store. Yeah, mom and pop store. <laughs> now, do you do you cover? Uh, you don't only sell from the store. Do you, do you wholesale, or well, that's do you? The biggest part you, of you, you okay, there, yes. Okay, you sell to what? To uh, schools? Yes. How schools, wide of an area? All over. All over. We're all over, over Vermont and Watertown. So do you have a salesman out in the road? You. You're looking at all, all of them. 
<laughs> That's from driving. That's from driving, right. See, he carries an extra basketball around, see, just in case somebody's looking for a basketball, right? So what, you travel, and uh, yeah. and that's that's the major part of your business, really. That's, that's the biggest part of our business. In mm -hmm. fact, there's a lot of things in the front of the store that we won't be handling in the future because we've got to start times the way they are, and mm -hmm. we're going to start getting out of things that mm -hmm. aren't doing How it. many years uh, have you uh, been here in North Country? Eight years in this this business. And then, all right, then before that, you're how many years from, from your car and so forth? That was eight years. But all together, all right. And, uh, you, but again, you don't only sell sporting goods, and you do have... The uh, printing, that's the big... <coughs> the that's, printing, okay. This, that's the biggest thing. Now, what do you mean printing? Uh, we, we, we silk screen. We silk screen hats, jackets, shirts. Uh, that's the big part of our business, you'll notice. Thing okay. So when you buy some of the things, uh, Calvin's just handing me right here, uh, that was done here at... Uh, I, I think that was, wasn't it, Calvin? Yeah, I hope it was because I, I, I assume that it is. Hometown Cable, that was done right here by the Finneys. Yes, right. All right, and uh, and you do the hats that are here, you do those yourself, yes. many of them? And most of uh, these that we see over here, Praise Farm, Family Farm, uh, uh, and so forth, are those all done here or do you have that, some of that done no, away? it's all done here. All done right here. Can we see some of that later and see how that's sure, done? Sure. Okay. Now, getting away from sports just for a second. You used to be in a horse business. Yeah, sure. What kind of horse business? Well, we had a, we had a stable and uh, uh, showed horses and had a riding stable. And Where was this? In Port Kent. This is before uh, oh, the yeah. sporting goods, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, long before that, yeah. And that's where the troopers... Go. I want to ask you... Oh, wait a minute. Okay, <laughs> I want to ask you about that. I, this may not be true, but I heard a story that the Finneys, and I think it was Gary Finney, had a horse at the state fair in New York, sure. and it bit the finger of a state trooper, exactly. his trigger finger. Can you tell me about that? Right off at the first Is he around here? He's going to see this and be upset? I, I, I don't know. It, it, we're not it, laughing about I, this, but no. it is kind of funny when you get to... It was a strange... It was, it was a true story. We were showing horses out in Syracuse, and my wife and I had gone out to, to eat, and we had just come back into the stable, and this, we had this one horse who was... He enjoyed... Nipper is her name, I think. <laughs> showing his teeth, and... We had bags all around and everything saying that don't. Had it completely, and this trooper came in with this young lady and decided that he was going to, said to watch this. And just about the time he stuck his finger in there, I was hollering at him, and he pulled it out, and it wasn't there any longer. And that's a true story. Took it right off. Took it right off. Can we get that phone? Hand, stand by. I don't want to. I don't want. We need this business here. Gary, getting back to your horse, the phone's been taken care of. Uh, that trooper did lose the finger? Oh, yeah. Did it affect his job? No, and the horse came out all right, too. The it horse came out <laughs> all right. <laughs> and and that, is it true? Now, this is another rumor I heard, that the horse's name was later changed to Trigger, <laughs> and that was sold to Roy Rogers. Is that true? I wish it that, was true. I wouldn't be working today. <laughs> you know, while you were on the phone, Pat, was, uh, Pat uh, Jerry was telling us that you used to jump horses, too. Uh, you you, you trained the jumpers and yeah. things? Did a lot of that. Where did you learn this? Out in the back of uh, my house in Jenkins Street and Elmore's Woods. Out yeah, in the but doesn't someone have to teach you what to do or uh, where well, to hold your leg or how to hold your hand and so uh, forth? A little bit. You can't just get all that from reading. Well, you, you watch a lot of it and go see a lot of yeah, it. Yeah, that, that helps you? Oh, yeah. I, I, always, I always liked animals anyways, as you can see by the little pug bullet I got floating yeah. around here. Hey, I used to... Ride a lot of horses. Okay. Now, now I get. Now I give the horses a ride. <laughs> All right. Now I just heard here today since I've been here, you call square dancing too. Yeah, that's through Central School. That's just what. Called the, a few minutes. All right. Well, now tell us what, what, how, how did that happen? Well, when did I, that start? When I was about uh, thirteen years old, right after my dad died, I I used to go to the school dances and I'd sit there and I'd watch the guy play the guitar and get his fingers on there and so forth and so on so I got an old guitar and I sit down and I started working on that and then I liked what I heard there and then we had a piano that nobody could play and I so I play by ear everything you I do, do play piano and by ear and, 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 uh, and then I started a I started a group uh, yeah. in fact I'm gonna give you some names who used to yeah, play go in ahead. the first group that I had that skinny kid Air Acidorian oh Played the fiddle. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Bove, you know that skinny boy that you yeah. Play yeah. Over, yeah. He played the drums. And uh, we had a group, and we used to go around and play at all the little church things and schoolyard things. And we got big money. We got about 2 or $3 a piece. And we did that for, and that was our spending money all through high school. 
This is during high school you're talking oh, about. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, back when we were playing sports and yeah. everything else, we still had time yeah. for our music and our fun. You know, usually a person gets in these many things, don't like it at home, and he wants to get away. Is that what was happening with you? You wanted to get away from the house? You learned all these other things? <laughs> no, because, you know, back in those days, I was so young, my mother, it was really something. My mother had to load up the car with all of, all the guys and all the instruments. Looked like Mom and Pa Kettle pulling into mm -hmm. a place, bro. You don't play music at all anymore? Oh, yes, I do. Do you? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, you have a band? Oh, I play a lot, yeah, around the thing. Doing a, a, a benefit for Desert Shield on the 24th down in Crown, or Desert Storm down in Crown Point, and I did one... Uh, Three weeks ago, down in Crown Point for Desert Storm, and who's I in your band now? Whoever I can get a hold of, the particular night, or or who's willing to play with you? Yeah, who, whoever <laughs> can put up. In, yeah, we we do a lot of it. <clears throat> well, now oh, Tolu plays with me quite a bit. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Smiley's old fiddler. Yeah, Smiley's old fiddler. Yeah. As a matter of fact, his son lives in Plattsburgh. I hear. David. Is it David? And he works at McDonald's up north. David, uh, it went, uh, uh, yes, one of them, uh, one of his sons. Two sons with the two business, sons. business with him in Peru. In fact, he plays drums. He plays drums with us a lot. Well, this one here is is uh, one of the assistant managers, or something at McDonald's in Champlain. One of the other boys. Oh, one of the okay. I, he came over, introduced himself to me one night. We were talking. I was Scott, maybe or I don't remember the name. Uh, talking about benefits. We also see Gary on so well with benefits as an auctioneer. Oh yeah, I've got one Sunday as a matter or Saturday night for our church and. In uh, in Peru, and I did one, and I've got one coming up in two weeks for Seton Catholic for their raising money for their sports program. And is there anything you do for the benefit of uh, Jerry Finney? <laughs> huh? I'm too old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? Tell me what you got something for what you were just going to tell me when I interrupted you uh, this weekend. You said something's coming up for the. We have an auction, uh, a talent auction for the church in Peru, uh, mm -hmm. the Peru Community Church, and that's Saturday night, and then. Uh, then I'm doing a, uh, an auction for Seton Catholic uh, uh, Booster Club at uh, Seton Catholic in about two or three weeks, and that's to raise money for their sports program. I did one up your way. I know you did for it for Harris. Harris, of course. It's back about three or four years ago. Now let me ask you. I was going to mention that. Let me ask you another thing. Do they call you Colonel Finney now? They usually call auctioneers <laughs> Colonel. Huh? This call me Mouthy. Mouthy. Oh, well, we, everybody calls you Mouthy. I wanted to call you something different. Yeah, Gary. Where did you go to auctioneering school? In the bathroom. I went to. I watched, used to watch Paul Cock, and I loved to hear him chant. So I'd get in the bathroom. I stand there, and I get twenty dollar bill, twenty dollar bill to give me twenty, twenty, twenty. I'd go watch myself in the mirror. And I did that just long enough. That Are you I serious? Could, that's exactly how I learned. You've how never had any professional training nope. on it, nope. and nothing on music. Nope. And, and and nothing on business. No professional training except <laughs> your dad, right? <laughs> My dad. That was pretty good training. Okay. Well, now give us a little bit, a uh, little bit of auctioneering, uh, slow, and then and then. Uh, uh, Bring it up a little bit. What would you like to buy? Well, uh, all right. Let's say, uh, uh, <laughs> what do we like, got here? Would you like to buy this? Yes. Here? Okay. Let's go. Uh, Give me a little. article right here. It's a head gator, folks. It's a head gator. It's well worth the money. It's worth about fifteen dollars. And where would you kind of pl kind of put that on the money? Would you give a dollar bill and get it started somewhere? Would you give a dollar and a dollar and a dollar? Would you give a dollar and a half? Thank you. We got a dollar and a half. Would you give two over here? Two dollars. I got. Would you give two and a half? Two and a half and three. And that's plenty right now because we're going to sell it for three dollars because that's a good deal. That's what we do here. See. That's okay. There you go. That's another one of Gary <laughs> Finney's Gary Finney's <laughs> advocations, I guess. The, not much money on that either, I guess, huh? Uh, I I I. I I wouldn't be this fat if I was. If I was if <laughs> they feed you. Huh? <laughs> yeah, they right. feed you, huh? <laughs> well, I enjoy it. Well, Gary, you uh, coach. They pay you a little bit on coaching. Coaching, uh, you got your store. You're making money here. You've uh, uh, horses some. You've, uh, you're doing some square dance calling. You do some auctioneering. What, play music. What else does Gary Finney get into? Well, that's about I not much time. That's for enough, but I ain't nothing else? No, we're going down. To that, that's back to that square dancing business. Yeah. That was the phone that uh, Peru Central School called, and we're going down there. This happened as a, as a whim. Last year, uh, Stan Riggs called me up, and he said, hey, Finn, come on down. He said, bring your stuff down here. And he said, uh, we've we're, we're got a square dancing class, and we'd like to have you come in. And So I went down on a Friday. Well, it ended up now I've got to go back for two days this week. i had to go back Thursday and Friday this week. So it's, that's fun. Now, all right. Getting way back, wait, you mentioned Vero Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill, is your brother, My is brother in Vero Beach? He's in Vero. Year-round, he lives there? No, he has the best of two worlds. He's got a nice home down there, and he has his camp down here in the lake, and he comes. He'll be up in the middle of May, and mm -hmm. do you get here. down to Vera Beach at all yourself? I did you get a away? couple of years ago, but uh, it's your busy season up yeah. here, right? You can't get away like that. Down there watching the Dodgers, does he go to the practices oh, and things? Oh, sure, huh? sure. He plays a lot of golf. And you know who else is in Vero Beach? 
There's quite a few people. Somebody from uh, Rob's Point that you know? Yeah, from Al Ryan. Right? Al I Ryan. I went over the ballpark and saw Al last time. Did I you? Yes, yeah, Al Ryan down in Vero Beach. Yeah. Yes, I and, uh, and saw Al. he's got a TV program down there. He interviews people and so forth and yeah. comes up here with his team in the summer. That's right. He's playing some music down there, too. You know. Yes, right? yeah, he's got a band or two. And you know Jim Rochester? Did you ever play with Jim? Jimmy, yeah. yeah. We did a show on Jim just recently. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we did a show on his Border Press. Saw some real good printing. Oh, an excellent right. show, as a matter of fact. They did an outstanding job, though. He and his daughter and his son there. And we were just, talk just talking to Leon Langto yesterday afternoon, and uh, Leon went down to the recording studio down there, and, uh, and Jimmy... Because it's actually, yeah. Jimmy put some... Uh, yep, they call it Just for Fun. Yeah. And, he, and he put five songs on, yeah. a, on, a, on a cassette. And Leon went down... Leon was at one of them, exactly. The lead, uh, lead, guitar lead guitar or something? Right. Yeah, okay. All right, well, we're talking with Gary Finney, and we're at Finney Sporting Goods. And we're here talking about the uh, the the, the well-known <laughs> Finn, as they call you. They call you Finn. I never heard that. They call me a lot of things. I'll yeah. tell you. <laughs> I found out where he's going to be Thursday and Friday. Ask him what he's doing Saturday afternoon. Oh, yeah. What are you going to do Saturday afternoon? What? Well, this Saturday afternoon. Yeah, what are you going to do Saturday afternoon? Oh, yeah. That's right. next I'm, to the mic. I'm, I'm going to be going down. Mm -hmm. and I, That's something else. I've never done this before. Calvin... Uh, I don't know if I invited myself or Calvin invited me, but I did the play-by-play -play last night and on for the uh, Seton or the um, Saranac Norwood Norfolk game, and I'm going to go back Saturday and do it Saturday afternoon. The Water Valley Saranac. You mean you held the mic and did that? Uh, Why am I holding this mic? Go ahead, talk to us here. <laughs> I'm gonna, go ahead, go ahead. I, I was awful nervous last night. I'm going to tell you right now. I, I, I. What game did you have? I had the uh, Saranac Norwood Norfolk. You did. Yeah. Did you do a good job? I, I, I did such a great job that they, they stopped the game. In I quarters. heard that. I wonder if that had anything to do with it, Gary. Would that have anything possibly to do with it? I don't know, but I've never seen anything like that. The game that. stopped in the end of the third quarter, yeah. not quite the end of the third. They just walked off the floor. That was it. What happened? Well, this, this must be that there were some people who didn't agree with some other people, and, and, uh, and then some people agreed to disagree. And, and The paper said something about they were upset with the uh, officiating yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, 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 worthwhile or not, but that's what they walked off, and that's not a reason to walk off the floor. I wouldn't say so. What would you, and under any circumstances in your right mind, could you ever do a thing like that? No. Uh, if I was going to, I would have done it last year when we played Norwood Norfolk up there. I didn't. I, I, the things I had to say was when we got in the hall, mm -hmm. <laughs> away from the public. Gary, uh, do you ever look back, or have any of these young people you have coached come in here and just thank oh, you for yes. your time back then? Uh, I know you were mentioning earlier about Sarah Barber, and she used to go to the ball game. Yeah. Sarah Barber was my English teacher in Champlain Central way back in 1945, 46, and I didn't appreciate her then. But when I got in the service and I didn't know the English I should have known, uh, I, I really did appreciate her. And, and you think back about these people, and you're, oh, yeah. you make a lot, an awful lot in the lives of these young people uh, back here. And so does John with the oh, JVs, yes. you know? We have a lot. You know, these kids come back, uh, the Peril Boy. I, if I started mentioning names, I would be forgetting somebody. It be, like Chris Doobie now is coaching with us in the system. Now, he played for me when I first started coaching in Osceola Valley. And I think that's one of the best satisfactions. Someone who's willing to give up his time, like you gave up yours, to help other people learn how to play sports, you know? And in the, just a few years I've been in Shea Z, uh, those kids, they go out to school, mm -hmm. they never miss stopping in here and seeing the kids in Wills when I was coaching down there that they're always in here you know 35 40 years ago when we played ball we didn't have to win to have a good time no. we, we, we enjoyed meeting people that's but how it, I knew your family and but it helped oh it helped of course it helps to win <laughs> but you have to have good coaching <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be, uh, we're waiting for the people to get back from their lunch, and we're going to be uh, watching them do some uh, silk screen printing in the back of the store here. And Gary, is there anything else you want to tell us about in, in the store here that's unusual you want to tell us about? <clears throat> what can you do? In other words, if a person wants a jacket, if I said to you, I want to get a dozen jackets for my uh, b basketball team in Z, uh, Champlain, how long would it take me to get a jacket made up and printed up, approximately? Oh, a week, ten days. You can do it that quick? Okay. And the artwork, and we build the screens mm -hmm. and put it all together. And if anybody was interested in talking to Finney Sporting Goods, they would call 562-1116. And if the phone keeps ringing, don't hang up, because uh, you know how long I rang today, because Gary's Bins, busy. Bob Bins got me by the, on the microphone. Yeah, and, and they're talking, <laughs> and, and, and uh, Jerry's busy somewhere else, and we got some more customers coming in, and we're going to get right back to you and let him handle his customers here so he can take us out to lunch. And uh, he don't need lunch, but he'll take us out to lunch. <laughs> We're back in the place where the money is made, where the people do the work. Here, they have two employees back here, and this is where you do your silk screening and silk screening. Uh, related, right? Right. So tell us a little bit, uh, uh, kind of guide us through this, if you would. Well, a little bit. This is this is the very start of it. This is what we call a frame. 
And, uh, you make the frames here? Lawrence Bullrest, right up in Ellenberg, or Daltona. Good, okay. good old friend Lawrence, he makes these for us and brings them in here by the dozens. And that's the frame. Now this is screen. This is what they call screen, and we have to stretch this. Now, first of all, when you talk about screen, that means there's holes in it, right? That's right. That it's like a screen, but they're very, exactly very fine. Very fine. And these are stretched out and stapled onto these frames. Right. Now, that's... Absolutely clear. Absolutely Nothing on it. Clear. Okay. They're washed, dried, and then we have a dark room here, which we have an emulsion that we put on the screen. If you'll notice now, what you saw over there was a screen. Now this is emulsion. Okay. It's put on the screen. I gotta put this back in. And how is that put on there with a... With a... It's, uh, it's, a it's a squeegee type metal. Okay. Here, and this is put on there, okay? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's, like, those are ready to be good when we need something on it. Okay, so now we take, this is the light table over here, and we take, a design or whatever it may be, we put it on like Calvin's hat there, the HTC that goes on the screen. We put the screen on here. That screen has a demulsion on it. That's right. Over the top of that, we put the uh, cover it up in darkness. We, we, we put these, these things, these fancy boxes. Okay. We turn this on for eight and a half minutes. The timer's over there, about eight and a half minutes, so the timer goes off, and we shut this off, and then we we burn we, we take now we burnt the screen, we come in here and we wash it out. And we get this type of an effect. Is that because of the emulsion you put on it that makes that do right. that? And then okay. so that when see like th this is what we burned on the table for okay. instance, okay? You can see through there. You see the now then it goes from here over on the on the machine, and you see what Timmy's doing over here right now. He's doing the bowl for kids' sake shirts right now. Uh, the big brothers, big sisters, and all those, the things that we burn in is the hole in the screen that allows the ink to pass through, and that's what we get on the shirt. Okay, this, this is the pizza. We, we can watch him here a minute now. He's yeah. going to use some kind of a squeegee. Yeah. That uh, so the part where that he wants to project through, uh, you have the holes. The rest of it's all opaque. Right. And now, when he, he squeezes this heavy right. paste, nearly. Yeah. By the way, that's one of my baseball players over there from Shay-Z, that Timmy, uh, Tim, Tim Collins. Collins. Hi, Tim. <laughs> you watch Hometown Cable at all? Yep. All the time. All the time. Hey, there you go, Calvin. Yeah, you heard that, eh? Okay. Know. Now, he's lifting it up very carefully. And where there were the holes were not opaque, uh, you get the paint through. And you see over here, the holes were fewer, so you have a little bit, more, it keeps getting more and more and more. Because the holes were, there weren't as many. And it says big brothers, big sisters. Every pin that falls puts a smile on a kid's face, and that's a, a benefit coming up. That's right. Uh, for the big... Then this is the pizza, it goes in the dryer. Okay, so it goes in through here. And it takes about how long to go through here? Minute? Yep, it'll come out this end. That's heat. Yeah. And, uh... It's going to be dry and ready. And now, most silt screening anywhere is all done manually. There's not much uh, That's right. automation, is there? It's, uh, a lot of silt screening done on shirts. It's all silk screening. And a lot of, a lot of uh, greeting cards are done by silk screening. And here it comes already, and it's dry. And there it is. It's dry. It's ready to put on. It's ready to take up to... So you, you sell them the shirts as well as the screening, right? right? These are a lot of shirts you have here. You buy the shirts. It would seem to me that you could have a pretty near a full-time business just doing this, this back end. If you'll notice up here, we have 1,300, over 1,300 of these screens. That means we have thir over 1,300 customers, and there's many of those screens. There's two people on two, two different things on the screen. You could have two on one. Yeah, we can if it happens right. to come So there. if you had just this little thing that, uh, if I can get Calvin's hat off here, uh, on this particular uh, screening on his hat, on the hats, would it take that same size screen for that too? You'd use that big oh, same, yeah. the same frame, huh? Yeah. And you'd keep this one on hand? Would you keep this? Uh, it would be up there with it's the other. It's up here somewhere. It's in that file right there. Okay. We've got it somewhere. Yeah, you want to see it? I, I should go get a skate and just... Oh, you're going to skate and... Yes, let's see, it's happening in the skates. 
I'll just go get it. All right, we're, we're going to get a light back on. There it is. All right, when uh, Gary's going to show us what's going on. That, There's a skate sharpening operation here. Let's see, this is the plug for the fan. All right. The fan running so that that's a new kind of switch. That's the, that's the old-fashioned that's switches, that's the right? Old -fashioned switch, but okay. It's that way. All right. Uh, it, what happens? We use the fan so it takes the dust particles out, as you can see. Uh, right. Your lungs would be. Uh, you don't need that on the shirts no, either. No. Right. I love the sharpened wood skates. So you put you seat. put the skate right in there. Skates in the jig. All right. Here we come. A lot of sparks. This is a computerized machine that uh, you know, we sharpen skates to your ability, to your position. Is it different for different positions? That's right. That's right. If you're a defenseman and uh, you're a real pro and you weigh uh, 165 pounds, it's much different than... Your uh, side, period. Oh yes, it's all computerized. It's right there in the wall. How many times do you go across there? Oh, it depends until I have to get it leveled and uh, make sure we got an edge on both sides. Now that one right there is pretty good already. It doesn't always happen. So we put the bar on there. Yeah. See how it's right on. How right many on. times can you strap in a pair of skates? You're wearing it down quite a bit each time there, aren't you? Long time. A lot of long, long time. Now, that, now you're putting we on have what? Kids that come in here every day. That's a, just a little a solvent we put on there to kind of preserve them. Stop the rust part of it. Now, how often does a person get a? Uh, don't tell me when he needs it, but how, how often would you need it? Uh, every game? Well, a lot of the hockey players come in every game because they want that edge, so they can. Yep. They figure uh, so many hours. Just follow it on the side, and just run it down there, and you're all set. And people. you do this as a, as a, again as a. Oh, well, we do it a lot. A little more. Really busy with this. Big, big, big thing in the winter here. Kind of letting down now, of course. You're ready to peel potatoes. There you are. <laughs> and there's the other one that's not sharpened. That's right. Now, can you tell now which one? If I move them around, you know which one you sharpen. <laughs> just run. Just put your thumb on each. Which one's been sharpened? Well, this one's got the edge. <laughs> yes, I guess that is true. All right, we're uh, we're back in the operations here, where we're seeing some cell screen printing, which he showed us. At a distance, but we're going to get up a little bit closer. Maybe talk to the, one of these or both of these people who are here doing this work. Now, <laughs> you've got four or five on here. That's because you're using different colors. This is this, this, uh, Penny's getting ready to do a four-color screen. Well, I'm going to have to get over here and see Penny. Just a second here. If I don't get burned as I go by the heater here, be all set. This is Penny. This is Penny Baker. Hi, Penny. Hi. I'm Bob Venn, and you are doing screen. You're going to do four colors. Yes. Oh, the thing turns. You use just one platform. I got it. You might want to just. Uh... You can tell me what you're doing here. Where are you from, Penny? Keysville. Oh, you got to be in Keysville for Shay Z to work here, huh? <laughs> yeah. Huh? He's got one from Shay Z behind me because he coaches up there and he lives in Sh Keysville. I was. Yeah. And he's got another man from Los Angeles Forks just came in here. To, that's his assistant coach or his coach rather of the JVs. Okay, Penny. So this is going to be a four-color job. This is a four-color print. Yeah. This is a. This is a, a spot dryer. Oh, so you do dry it right away. You, you we can have do to it. dry the color with the spot dryer, then swing it because we can't move the. Once the thing is and he's down to the platinum, we can't move it. Okay. You'll see what she's doing. Okay, now she's putting the brown across here, really going across there, and it's all done. Okay. Now you dry it. She just brings that across and dries it. Oh, the, right over the top of it. All right. She's putting the the heater on. No light or anything. That just. No, it's not drying. Just now I see some other colors on there. Is that a problem? Oh no, you're going to cover them up now. <laughs> all right, yeah, I see something. I look like you. Were... Now, wait, now, how do you know you're in the right spot right now? It's all registered. Yeah, I lined it. It's all registered. Apart. Remember that word we heard at Border Press? As a register mark. Well, this is all registered. It'll be exactly where it's supposed to be. And besides that, if you're from Shazy or Keysville, you know these things, right? <laughs> right. Right. Oh, look at the difference we got now. Kawasaki. That's not it. doesn't say Kawasaki. I don't read very well upside down. <laughs> okay, now they're. She's drying, this color. she's drying it over the top. And how long do you have to let it dry for? Just a couple of seconds. Just a couple of seconds. Just put the color flash dry. 
That's so you don't get the running with the other one. Right. Now, the do the colors overlap at all? These, this particular print doesn't. Some, some we purposely have. Them. Okay, so then you get a different shade or whatever. But this one here, you do not, huh? And I assume that when you're doing uh, one of these, Gary, uh, your price would vary by the number of screens you're using, right? Because it takes more time and more effort and everything else. We do a lot of blends and a lot of two, three, and four color prints. Okay, we got the, the coloring is off. And we're going now to a yellow. You got to push that down there real good. It's down good firm onto the uh, platinum. The, the, the platinum. Yeah. platinum. That's the platinum color, or what's the platinum? Platinum is what the shirt is. That, that's the platinum. Wow, I'm a diamond <laughs> myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a rough diamond that is. Okay, um, it takes some time to do one with. Uh, he, he can do well, obviously three or four well, more. Because she's got to dry it between each time, right? Yeah. And you're getting paid by the piece, so he's making five times as much as you are. Did you, <laughs> did you realize that, Penny? Huh? <laughs> okay, we're going down to the black now, and I guess this is the last one. Yeah. And uh, the thing that I think of, Gary, now what do you do to clean the screen when you put away so that ink doesn't stay? Well, we have a, what we call a screen cleaner. You do wash it, huh? But that's, you see what... There you go, right there. Yeah. Now, how, uh, are these machines going all the time? You got enough self-cleaning to do oh, this? Yeah, yeah. Huh? You do, eh? Let's talk to Tim a minute here. Uh, when you said he's from Shay Z, right? Yep. Okay, how long have you been working here, Tim? Uh, almost a year. And you played baseball with this man here? Yeah. What position did you play? I played outfield. Uh, he was going to say he could teach you how to pitch. That guy in the doorway, that John, could teach you how to pitch, too, you know. <laughs> you played outfield. Yeah. Now, how long were you at Shay Z, Gary, t uh, coaching? One year? Two. Two. Oh, he must have liked you the first year. He got your back. Huh? You still live in Shay Z, Tim? Nope. And your last name was? Collins. Collins. Okay. We were over to the school the other day getting some shots of the uh, uh, guys and dolls that's coming up for this weekend. You know, the plays in big yep. play in Shay Z this weekend. Well, that's great. Does a great job. And when you see these screens out around the county, you're probably looking at one of the Finney Sporting Goods uh, screens. Now, you did this you didn't do? Yes. You did this too? Yes. Now, that's not screening, is it? Yes. That's jacket screening, yes. Well, now, there's a, look at this. That's great. Here's a Plattsburgh High School hockey. It was a great thing today. Everybody wants something on their, their shirts or their jackets or their coats. And you can get it right done right here at the Finney Sporting Goods store in the North Country Shopping Center in Plattsburgh, New York, courtesy of uh, Jerry and uh, Gary Finney, the residents of Keysville now, but remember, Gary was from Peru, Jerry was from Willsboro, and I'm from Champlain. I'm Bob Venn, Calvin Castine behind the camera. You're watching what's going on here, and it's a program that we think is a little bit different on the history, really, of the Finney family in the county of Clinton, well-known uh, way back from dad and granddad and now uh, Gary and then his sons and uh, the whole Finney family. And it's been a pleasure being here. We're going to check it out. We've got a couple more little things to tell you and then we'll be finished here on this uh, Wednesday morning, the 6th of uh, March. And uh, thanks much for watching Hometown Cable every night, particularly what's going on here on Sunday nights with yours truly. Back in the hat department and we see hats here, Gary, that are not done with stencils. Like this, what do you call this type That's of? That's embroidered. That's, now, how, do you, you don't do that here? No. But no. you can make any kind that I want? That's right. And some are licensed, of course, and those are done elsewhere than what we do have embroidery. Uh, okay. Embroider hats. And you can, sure, if you want them custom made for yourself, that's, it can be done. It can be done on any of this type of thing that you right. can do, right? As long as it's not something that is uh, copyrighted or patented mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can do those. And how long are we talking there or if you had to have something done? A week to two. Okay. Now, we, we mentioned before, and we'll mention again, we're not here to do an ad. We're here to talk about the Finneys. But while we're here, what a great opportunity for you to tell us what is available here because you people out there 
are looking for something for your children, for yourselves, and so forth. All these schools, you have school items on hand. What kind of school items do you well, have? We have like the duffel bags over here, all the school bags. You notice over here, Plattsburgh High School, NAC, Northeast Clinton. Those are on hand. Those are on hand. We always have those. Beatman Town Center, all of, all the schools, mm -hmm. and uh, of course the jackets down here. We always have some of those ready for people and. Uh, uh, Hockey sticks, you've got plenty. Oh, yes. Hats. We are going to get into, uh, in the next three, over the next three months, we're going to get in a lot heavier on the pro license stuff, you know, Giants, football Giants. You are going to get yes, into that? we're going to get into that. Okay. Some of the things we're handling, we are going to have, and we're going to put our money in something else that we feel is going to. Okay. Um, what else are we, uh, are we covering? You've got an awful lot of hats. Uh, you got all kinds of hats, A right? bunch. What? A bunch. A bunch. Now. Give us a little, a little spiel. What can you do for me or anybody else in that back room? We just came from a stenciling. What kind of stenciling can you do for people, and how do they go about doing it? Well, all they have to do is, uh, you know, if they don't have artwork, we have artists, and uh, we we can do the artwork for them. Or if they do have their artwork, they bring it in. Or, and if they might have it camera ready, well, that's a little cheaper. It's a little easier for us if we don't have to mm -hmm. have the camera work all done. And uh, then we just go through the process you saw in the back and. Mm -hmm. uh, Get in their their uh, product and you're open five seven days a week six days a week six days a week six days a week and uh, you promise people to smile if they come in yes if uh, if everything's going all if right going all right <laughs> uh, if we can't get a smile out of this we get a smile out of Jerry <laughs> behind over there and if you want to really get a smile out ask her about our grandkids <laughs> that'll that'll get a smile she just did see <laughs> and she's got to help her back there right now helping her out see that's John Zaran we talked to her earlier. Uh, are you? Are well, you going to have something made up for the uh, the girls winning the sectional? I don't know. I haven't. Uh, have they haven't <coughs> had long enough to come down? Out they didn't win the section. Yeah, they, yeah, no, they won the they section. Won the Who'd they beat? I don't know. What's the name of that team up uh, uh, up nor uh, uh, Northeast Clinton? <laughs> Northeast Clinton. Okay. <laughs> well, that was like we were down doing that game. You'll see that game here on. Hometown Cable, and they, they, the girls played very well. I thought that was a great game. They, uh, they played outstanding. They, they, they kept their heads, and they had their cool, and they, they played a great game against an outstanding team, NCCS. Both teams played well. Uh, yes, and it's too bad you can't all win. Uh, that's right. That's just, I've got to be a loser. I can tell you all about that. You know how to win? <laughs> yes. You also know how to lose, right? I, 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 oh, 19 uh, times. Okay. <laughs> how many years is that? How many years? Just this one year? Yeah. Gary, there's one more thing I want to talk about, or maybe come together. Uh, this past year, a year ago, you were chosen as the coach of the year. Oh. Is that right? Uh, yes. Let's talk about that just a little bit. Now, that's for the that was for the league itself, and then by the, the section, both. I, I mean, you had two of them, one right after the other. Well, Came up, you were champions, number one. Right. Then you became coach of the year. It was in the paper, nice big spread on Gary Finney. Well. <laughs> and I know because I wrote you a note, and I said, yeah, yes, you know, you this did. great for yes, you uh, In fact, I, you've, written me, you've written me four times on that. I, I mean, oh, you keep track, <laughs> huh? No, I haven't. But that particular, I guess, I, you've always, you always are remembered. I, 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 in fact, I, I think I, I could pull those notes. I like, my I like to, to, to compliment people who deserve it. And, and is that any reason why you're here giving us this interview today? Because I did that? Say no. So I, <laughs> uh, no, no, really. Uh, but uh, there are many people out there who are watching, and many people in this community, and many of you don't know that, oh, this man an awful, awful lot. Not only does he, has he got a lot of t time he spent with the, with the young people in the uh, Willsboro, Austinville Fort, Keysville, and Shazy area. He's also donated a lot of his time, like for uh, square dancing, auctions, uh, you didn't donate his time all the time with the band, but just his next to it, huh? Uh, and uh, he, he likes people, and uh, it's, he didn't learn it all by himself. He learned it from his mom and his dad. And he lost his dad when he was 13. He didn't get a chance to get that real business sense, right? I wish you could have, huh? Uh, I guess so. I, I learned to have fun the way he did. Though. That's great. That's great. <laughs> and uh, you've already a few years past the age of your dad when yes, you lost yeah. him, right? Uh, but you don't. You, we're we're keeping our weight in in, in shape. That's why, right? Well, that's we're right. watching ourselves here. <laughs> Gary, is there anything else I have not covered about the Finneys in any way that I you like to mention now? Anybody that you want to say hello to, and mention to anybody? Anything you want to? No, I don't think so. I just think that you know that uh, uh, Finney family, of course, uh, has enjoyed the North Country, and uh, you know it's people that make people, and mm -hmm. it's people like you and Joe Blow out there in the street, and. Uh, Always got time to say hello, and that's the that's what makes the world go around. And money doesn't mean anything. Right? 
doesn't mean anything. My daughter used to say that. My daughter Sue, I know, she used to say, Dad, you always talk about money. Money don't mean anything. Now she's married, and all of a sudden she thinks that money means just a little bit more than it used to. Well, if you got it, I suppose. You don't need a lot. As long as you're, you know what? Someone told me one time, he said, you'd like to be rich. And I told him, you are rich. You'd like to have money. You can be rich without money. Friends. Good family, friends, and, and good health. That's right. And with that, we're going to say goodbye to the Finney family here. Gary and uh, Jerry way in the back playing with the screens way back there. And we thank them very much for their time here at the North Country Shopping Center. And um, if you're in need of sportings of any kind, stop in and see uh, Gary, uh, uh, Gary and uh, Jerry. And if you do, even if you don't need anything, just stop in and stop say in hello. Solo. Stop in and say hello. They're always willing to talk. As a matter of fact, I'm so glad that he wasn't shy this morning. I thought you might be shy, Gary. Any possibility of that? <laughs> well, I've been, I mean, I'm easy to, to, to embarrass you now. Oh, yes. And, and good luck with your uh, uh, benefit auctions you have Thank coming you. up. Thank you. And I hope they make a lot of money for you. Well, I hope they make a lot of money for the people I'm doing them for. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Hometown Cable. Uh, what's going on here, Bob? Then don't forget you can watch this every Sunday night at five o'clock, eight o'clock, one a.m., and again at nine o'clock. And thanks for your nice comments and for your comments in general. If you got any ideas as to where we might go and who you'd like to hear about on TV, just let myself know or Calvin. Hometown Cable. It's two nine eight home. Please tune in this coming Sunday night. 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 1 in the morning, and again at 9, and you're going to be meeting Gary Finney, Jerry, his wife, the parents, uh, Bill and Dorothy Finney, the, from the old uh, John Deere, and the two grandchildren, uh, Andy and Trevor. Trevor. We're talking to them about, about the Finneys in general in the county, about his, all the sporting and all the other uh, things they do in the area, and about these Finney sporting goods here at North Country Shopping Center. Tune in and... Uh, learn all about the Finneys.